Warning. You've reached on the box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, Welcome to On the Box, where you will experience the worst 27 minutes of your life. <laughs> well, it might be the better 27 minutes of your life, since Easy's not here. <laughs> you never fail, do you? Never fail. Mm -hmm. Easy, you know, I've known Easy for 19 years now. Mm -hmm. Six of the best years of my life. <laughs> I like that guy. I, don't, I have no idea why he's not here today. But yeah, I do. He had, he had 187 emails yesterday that he answered, and he wanted to spend a day with his family because we were away. And we had more than 300 emails apiece. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be with you than my wife, Ray. You're so much fun. <laughs> All right, that's not true, honey. That is absolutely not true. I love you dearly. She uh, doesn't tune in and watch this anyway, so we've got nothing to worry about. We had a good time. Where, I, where were we? We were in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, we flew into yeah. Nashville. Now, this is, this is why Ray doesn't book plane tickets. Ray, you haven't booked plane tickets, I think, in 15, 20 years. Yeah. All right, so Ray has this okay. harebrained idea. Hey, let's go to Tennessee and show the premiere for Evolution versus God. And Ray, in the middle of the night, as he gets all of his harebrained ideas, decides to purchase the plane tickets himself without asking anybody if he's going to do it correctly. So he purchases these plane tickets. There's four of us going, and he has us landing in Nashville. And then we have a three-hour drive to our destination spot. We cross a time zone to get to our new place. I didn't want to spend three days in Chicago airport in a layover, that's why. But not only that, Ray Comfort had us coming back <laughs> before he actually showed the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I admit it. Eddie calls up and he says, why are we leaving an hour after we arrive? <laughs> So I booked us to leave a day early. So almost $800 in fixing <laughs> the issue that Ray had caused. We made our way on out there, but it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people out there, and I don't know how many, probably mm -hmm. two to 3,000 people. Uh, knock, in. knock. Oh, that tuned in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That there was 1,800 the there, I oh, think. Oh, 1,800 there. Yes. I, you know, who's, who's counting, right? Yes. An evangelist, you start exaggerating numbers. It just, it's all mm. the same. But it's a great time. There was a great response. We had a great response. And in fact, it was about 10, 15 minutes. They had completely sold out of the DVDs. 15 to 20 minutes. Evolution, 15, 22 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before that scene, the, the, the actual movie, they, they, they sold out in, tw in 20 minutes. Yeah, I was talking wonderful. to Ken Ham, and he said, you know, we could have brought five times the amount of DVDs, and they yes. still would have sold. Yeah, it's very but encouraging. that is very, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I'll jump right into it. And who's sitting over in my seat? Stuart Scott. Stuart Scott, you are with us today. Look at that guy. Yeah, I'm here. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be back. Yeah, it's absolutely great to have you here, Scotty. And we're going to jump into it. Uh, the title of uh, today's show, as it is right now, is $130 million in masterpieces were burned. What? Yes. All right, the New Zealand Herald, it goes on to report that the mother of a Romanian art high suspect has admitted to torching seven stolen masterpieces, including works by Picasso, Monet. Mm, no, Monet. Oh, Monet. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And the Media Facts News Agency reported this. The mother of the suspect, Radul Doragagu, Dor Dor just Dor move over it, said that she <laughs> incinerated the artworks valued at over $130 million in her stove and a bid to destroy any evidence. Museum scientists found a large amount of paint, canvas, and nails in the ash from Duggaroo's stove. Six Romanians will stand trial in August for what has been called the theft of the century. And I read earlier today, contradicting her earlier statements, she now denies that she had anything at all to do with the burning. No, you've got to read it as it says. Contradicting earlier statements, this week the mother said she did not burn the yard in her stove. It was in her backyard. It was in her <laughs> backyard. <laughs> all right, Ray, I want to see how you're going to grab a hold of this and transition this on into the spiritual. Well, it's very simple. Look, look at the extreme she's going to to cover her son's sins. 
Mm. You know, $130 million, she wants to get rid of the evidence because she doesn't want them brought to justice. And uh, we're going to face God on judgment day. And the only way you're going to get transgressions covered is through the blood of Christ, through the cross. No wow. other means. That's pretty good. It's all right. Yeah. Four out of ten. Yeah. Scotty, can you do better? Yeah. I think anybody can, <laughs> yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, by using one of Ray's old uh, quotes from the Evidence Bible, I found something that was very interesting. It says, this is attached to Job. The verse is, indeed, these are the, these are the mere edges of his ways, and how small a whisper we hear of him. These are the words written on the museum in Christchurch, New Zealand. And uh, we've, we look at the value of things that are perishing, uh, $130 million. And um, uh, we forget the beauty and the, uh, the value of what God has made and his handiwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we pass by that every day, but we value paintings made by men at millions and millions of dollars. So uh, let's stop and look at uh, God's handiwork and appreciate that. Great point. Yeah, I was coming back on the plane. You were asleep, I think, at the time. Yeah, snoring. I was looking out the window and just looking at the clouds and thinking how the heavens declare the glory of God. I love those great big puffy clouds. So there cumulus was a whole nimbus. Yeah, a whole lot of cumulus nimbus is running around out there, and it was just, they, they shout to God's glory. Don't they? How, how amazing he is. Mm, and you... The video that you took of the lightning continually... Uh, oh, that was going there. That yes. was going on. That it was, it, it was, was all terrible. Over it was over Chicago. It was terrible it was because in the distance. Yeah, your phone doesn't do good footage. <laughs> However, <laughs> God, on the other hand, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship. And that word workmanship is actually poema, where we get the word poem. Don't we are God's poem. We are his Who am I? workmanship. <laughs> no, different, different Greek word you're, you're thinking of there. Uh, but we, you know, we are God's masterpiece when you think about it. The work that he has done inside of us because of Christ hmm. on display, we are the trophy of his grace. And now he's commissioned us with a work hmm. to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And uh, I, it absolutely amazes me that he would uh, pick me. And, and uh, I'm amazed, too. I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're all amazed, Mark. Is that your leg? <laughs> we we want to show you uh, an update from uh, the mega conference from this weekend in Tennessee. And this was uh, put together by Eddie Roman, who was there running around with his camera. I wish he had his camera when we were running around the water park attached to the hotel. That was a it's, lot And we were not detached fun. to the hotel we were not when we run around the water park. No, it was a wonderful time. What, did we spend four hours? It was like four hours. We, it was a part of the, the, it was all paid for by the cost of the yes. room. So it was a free water park, but I haven't been in a water park for about 30 or 40 years. Well, you're crazy in a water park. I, I absolutely you. loved it. I felt it yesterday. All my muscles are kind of tender. I mean, I'm 63, running around, going down these, getting flushed down these huge drains. <laughs> but it was uh, amazing. Um, just loved it. I wish we had videos and pictures of that, but us four. I wish I'd had a around. video of you being an idiot. I mean, you were so unlike yourself. <laughs> Seriously, it was just completely changed. They um, were in this, <laughs> we're in this great big pond that was no ripples or anything, and suddenly wave pool. <clears throat> wait, was it called a wave pool? Yeah, a wave pool, and suddenly a buzzer goes, and this big wave start going everywhere. But you scream out, yeah, and then we like a pig. <laughs> And I like to uh, pr pretend playing possum oh, like you're dead to the lifeguard. It was so funny. Jumping in after I had, us. I, I had God's sake, I was, I was laughing so much at your silliness. Yeah. Well, I was discipled. <laughs> uh, so we have a video we want to show you of uh, the mega conference held up by uh, Answers in Genesis with uh, Ken Ham. We were able to bump into Todd Friel and Eric Hoven while we were there. But Eric uh, had nothing to do with this video. Neither did Todd, <laughs> but Eddie did. Here's the video. This is Tennessee at the mega conference with Answers in Genesis. Tonight they're showing a premiere of our movie Evolution vs. God. We're very excited. We're going to meet up with Ken Ham. He's from Australia. That's down under. New Zealand and Australia are rivals always with sport, but in God, we're brothers. So look what they're doing. They got Evolution vs. God. This is a premiere and they're making it available tonight. So we are very excited. But I'm even more excited about my new t-shirt. This is my grandma. 
Hi, I'm Ken Ham, President and CEO of Answers and Genesis and the Creation Museum, and I'm here at Answers and Genesis 2013 Mega Conference. This is a yearly conference that we put on that brings people from all across the USA and other parts of the world as well, and we equip people to be able to defend the Christian faith, set them on fire for the Lord, so they can go out and more effectively stand on the authority of the Word of God and present the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And at this mega conference, on the Monday night, as we begin the week, Week, uh, we have a very special premiere, a premiere of the movie Evolution vs. God that Ray Comfort of Living Waters has produced and this is a very revealing uh, video and really shows the bankruptcy of evolution. You know, I, after watching this video I just realized more and more as I have done before that if only Christians would become equipped with answers and know how to defend the faith, they could really run rings around these secularists out there and not be intimidated by them. Uh, that's what this movie shows and that's really what the Ministry of Answers in Genesis is all about. Also, Living Waters is all about too, equipping people to defend the Christian faith in our secular world. I don't believe in evolution, no creation is true. I believe that God alone created me and you. And the movie that we're going to see is not an incredible movie. You cannot miss this movie. I love it. I want to see every teenager, public school student, university student in America watch this movie. Friends, do you see anything on this table? Because I don't. This is a table where the Evolution vs. God DVDs were. But they're gone. 2,000 of them in less than 20 minutes. So how exciting is this? Help us get the word out about evolution versus God. God bless. Good job, Eddie. Good job, Eddie. You gave out your first DVD, the first of a million that we're going to try to give out across this country when right. we were at a restaurant called Cracker Barrel. No, that's not a commercial. That's just the restaurant we ate at. It seems like 12 mils while we were there. Yeah, it was brilliant. Cracker Barrel is really nice. This is it a is. commercial. Love it. Love that place. Mm. Mashed potato gravy. All right, so yesterday I get a knock at the door. I wasn't there. I was upstairs, and my child comes running up to me and says, Dad, there's a man at the door asking to talk to you. And I said, all right, here I go. Go to the front door, and there's a guy there from some organization wanting to sell me something. And next thing I know, I'm sitting down on my porch, and about 40 minutes went by, and I had a chance uh, to share with him. And his other guy that he was traveling with came on by. He was hitting the other, other houses up as well. Well, they're trying to sell. But uh, he was trying to have me make a donation to his organization. Oh, that's nice. I don't want to name that organization. The organization, the organization. Was okay, so okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I actually ended up giving him some money, but we sat down and we talked, and <laughs> my kids came on out, and they're sitting next to me. And here I am sharing the gospel. And it just reminds me of you come across women. Uh, housewives, homeschool mothers who say, how can I share the gospel? Mm. And I'm reminded of the knock on the door. They are not an interruption to your schooling. They're actually yeah. part of your curriculum. That we need to integrate the door-to-door -door salesman, the phone call at the inopportune time, mm. as part of our curriculum that God has set up for us here on earth. They're not an interruption of our job. They are our job. And I remember seeing when I was at a public library uh, when I was in uh, college, my freshman year in college, uh, the librarian had on her desk, it says, you are not an interruption of my job, you are my job. Well, that's a great attitude. I, I love that attitude, and I, I, I want to adopt that as I go out and about and do the things that God has called me to You need a do. big sign on your door that says, uh, solicitors welcome, I'm a Christian. You only get no one knocking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, you do something like that with Halloween, though. Yes. Yeah. You have uh, trick-or-treaters are welcome here, and yeah, yeah. You've, you've turned it around. But you may remember the flight across to Tennessee mm -hmm. on that short flight before we did the little quick drive. Uh, a lady sat next to between Easy and I, went out to seat empty. So, and uh, just a reminder that if you're ever in an airplane and you want to witness to someone, make sure you break the ice the second they sit down because if you don't, that person will evolve into a Goliath as they sit there. So true. They'll get bigger and bigger and more and more intimidating. So if you just say, hi, I'm Ray, or use your own name and say, what's your name? Well, I don't want to <laughs> cause confusion in a plane. Um, it, it'll get rid of that intimidation. Saturday, you went out to was it Huntington Beach or Newport? We went. Out <laughs> <laughs> good question. Yeah, that was good. Scotty will tell you what happened on Saturday. This is a, a belated update, but it's worth sharing because it's reasonably amusing. We uh, took off for Huntington Beach as we normally do, and a long ways away from the pier, we ran into traffic, 
and suddenly realized, oh, this was uh, surfing championship week down at Huntington Beach, and for miles, uh, the traffic was backed up. So we made a U-turn, went back up to the freeway, went down the freeway to Newport Beach, which is our <coughs> alternate, and we couldn't get near it because <laughs> of the traffic. And then we went all the way back up to Sunset Beach, and uh, Seal Beach, Seal Beach, and decided to try there, and there was a huge band <laughs> that was drowning us out, talking inside the car, riding by. Huh. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a little daunting. But there was one point where, when we had first pulled off the freeway and we were making a left-hand turn to head down to Huntington Beach, uh, right there, w an hour and a half later, we were just on the other way. Uh, uh, trying to get back down to Seal Beach, and uh, we were joking around how funny it would be if uh, we said, an hour and a half later, we're going to be sitting right over there <laughs> trying to get that one. And so even though it was daunting, and uh, we did try, and all things th are of the Lord, and um, Ray ended up talking to uh, uh, a couple. Why don't you uh, uh, mention that, Ray? Yeah, well, Scotty was getting gas in the car. I nipped across for a couple of homeless people. Not homeless people. They're just young people who were... Surfers. No, no, they, they were... Homeless. No, no, I can tell the story. Hitchhikers. Yeah, yes. Hitchhikers. Just a girl, a guy and his girlfriend with a dog uh, begging as cars pulled up at the lights. Right. And I got some money out to give them. And as I went to give it to them, I noticed they were getting money from a car already. I thought, they're doing well enough. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you guys done pretty good. And they says, yeah, done okay. So I got to witness to them. And they were into all sorts of uh, sexual sin and stuff yeah. like that. And I was able to challenge them and talk about their salvation. So it was a Romans 8.28 day. Mm. But it even rained when we were going down to Seal right. Beach. So uh, uh, I was saying to Scotty that God doesn't require a success. He just requires our faithfulness. Mm. And uh, that's what we were, faithfully driving around freeways for two hours on Saturday. Yeah, day. right. And, you know, we, we can't confuse uh, fruitfulness as seeing converts to the faith. Right. Fruitfulness is faithfulness. Yeah. God, I'm faithful to step out of my comfort zone, to want to reach out to people. <coughs> you have to bring me, as you direct me and guide me with your eye, Bring me to those people who you want to share yeah. with. Well, we had a good time of fellowship for two hours. Yeah, so in other words, you quit. <laughs> <laughs> you need to listen to Tony Miano's message, don't quit. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, um, right here, here, here's a question from Natasha. She says, is accepting Christ as your personal Savior the same thing <coughs> as asking Jesus in your heart? Is accepting uh, uh, Christ as your Savior? No, it's, it's, it's really not. Um, the asking Jesus into your heart is not in Scripture. It's used in, in modern evangelism. It's just a, right. something that says, just ask Jesus into your heart. But, of course, Ephesians tells us that when someone saved, Christ dwells in the heart through faith. But the way to get in there, if I may put it that way, is you've got to repent and trust in the Savior. It's not a matter of tapping Jesus onto the end of your lifestyle and say, okay, I've asked Jesus into my heart. The other thing is a double whammy question because also... The Bible doesn't talk about accepting Jesus. God accepts us. We're criminals in God's eyes. And the thing that makes all the difference is the moral law. When you bring the, you bring the law in and realize that we're lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart, rebels, idolaters, with multitude of sins, then we don't go accepting Jesus. We plead with him for mercy. We put our trust in him after we've repented and then come to know Christ. So it's good to use biblical terms so people know exactly where we stand. What are you looking at? You know, in John 1, 12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. It talks about for as many as received him. It's not accepting, it's a receive. And yes. I, I, th I think you nailed it on, uh, on the head there. Scotty, you have thoughts? Uh, yeah, just as you read that, the, something new came to mind in... Uh, in uh, and it and it left too. <laughs> 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 While I was saying the words, it oh, flew that's away. Really funny, when you just passed back to us. <laughs> um, repentance and faith is is the criteria that God requires for us to uh, believe in Him. I know what it was in the uh, in this seed and the sower, the sower and the seed. Do you know that it says that uh, for the uh, seed that fell on uh, uh, thorny ground or uh, 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 stony ground that they believed. They believed and then they fell away. So it isn't about what we do other than uh, coming to God on his terms. <clears throat> Repentance and faith is what was preached in Acts. And when you come to God on his terms, God does something. God regenerates you. 
being born again is being born of God. You had nothing to do with your first birth into this world, and you are going to have about the same amount to do with your second birth. You have to be, you have to die, and that's repentance and faith, and saying, God, you're right and I'm wrong, and turn to God and say, God, have mercy on me. And he comes in, and he makes you new, and he regenerates you from the inside, and you're born into the family of God. And all of that is something that God does. We can't do any of it. So it's not by our merit. It's not by uh, anything that we can do. It's by God and God alone. And so what a, what a relief it is to find that out. And uh, so we're just to be faithful in preaching the word, and uh, God, God does the rest. And so those are my thoughts. Well, that's pretty good for someone who lost that thought. <clears throat> it reminded me when Scotty and I were coming back from hunting the beach a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, I can't remember. Um, we talked about evolution being unobservable. When I said the word unobservable, I said, that reminds me of a song, unobservable. And I started singing this tune. Go ahead. Uh, and no, no, I can't, I can't sing, you know that. And so for about five minutes, trying to remember the name of the song, unobservable, it was actually the song, unforgettable, that we couldn't remember. Which unforgettable. Was <laughs> That's it. <laughs> unobservable. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we want to keep our viewers, Mark. You're still with us. Carl Kirby is a good friend of the ministry here of the Living Waters. He has a ministry entitled Reasons for Hope. He has created a lot of videos, uh, all the debunked videos. You can just go to YouTube, type in debunked, and you are going to be amazed at all the videos that he's put together. But he has a couple of conferences coming up, and we want to show you a promo for a couple of these upcoming conferences that he's put together. And if you are in the area... You're going to want to go to go to these. One's in uh, Cicero, Indiana. The other one is Mason, Ohio. There's a lot more information. We're going to show you the video, but the website is the Hope 2013 right there on your screen. dot com. The Hope 2013. com. And here is the promo for Carl Kirby's upcoming conferences. Well, the Hope Conference, I think, is going to be a, a fun event because we have brought, uh, for Cicero, Indiana, we've got Nazareth coming in. And, and Nazareth is a Christian comedian. He's been around a while. He's performed at uh, the Grand Old Opry, the Dove Awards. Um, and he's coming in, and he's going to be the MC, but he's also going to speak. And so interjecting humor inside there, to me, is a really important aspect of, uh, of, the, of the conference. But we've got Eric Hoven coming. We've got Diana Waring. Juan Valdez is, uh, is a, a guy out of Miami that uh, he's got a PhD in apologetics, but he communicates for normal people, which is me. Well, I like that. Uh, and then my son, Carl Jr., is going to be there, and he's speaking on the video games and those types of things. So we're going to cover all of the know it, live it, share it aspects. Uh, but the unique feature is going to be that we've got a Spanish session going, coinciding. It's a, it's a full-blown Spanish conference that Juan is leading. And that's going the exact same time that we've got the English conference going. So we're going to be in the same building in two, di two different areas and uh, running two conferences. And I'm just excited about it because the facility that we've got, Harbor Shores Baptist Church, is, is a great facility. It's a beautiful facility. The staff, the church staff are amazing. They're, they're, they're great folks. But uh, to have that unique of a lineup because there's a lot of different personalities going on there with the, my son and myself. And then Eric and Diana, uh, and then Nazareth. I mean, I don't even know what he's going to do. <laughs> he, he's funny, man. The guy is really, he's really good. So uh, that's going to be fun. And that's the first one. That's October 18th and 19th. But then the next weekend, we're going to do one in Mason, Ohio. And that's going to be a smaller version. But we're still going to have both the Spanish and the English conference going at the same time. But that one is going to be Mike Riddle, Juan, and my son and I doing that one. Uh, in, uh, in, in Mason, Ohio. Looks interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, the hope 2013com we, we have time for another question or two, and I want to jump into that. We have one from a guy named Scott. Stewie? Scotty? Hmm. Scotty, if you have questions, <laughs> just you don't ask us. I don't about. need to email. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> Well, anyway, Scotty says, right. I fess up. I'm dealing with a coworker. <coughs> Cow orca. <laughs> but coworker, you think he's talking about you or I? I don't know. It's, it's not Scotty. Come on. Okay, I'm dealing with a coworker right now that claims that he doesn't believe in God, nor does he believe in evolution. 
How do you deal with someone like that? Go for it, Mike. All right. I'd like to. All right, so what does he believe in? I might ask him that question. So you don't believe in evolution, you don't believe in God. What is it that you do believe in? I think Greg Kokel, inside of his book, Tactics, he says, uh, he had somebody write in and say, hey, I, I work with a friend who's a Buddhist. How do I share with him? And he goes, well, you presuppose that all Buddhists believe the same thing. A lot of people who claim the name of Christ don't necessarily believe the same thing. They might have that label, but they can adhere to a whole bunch of different tenets. So just ask them. Take them out for a cup of coffee and ask them, so what is it that you believe in? What do you think happens after we die? And then I just allow that person to share. Hey, I believe that after I die, I'm going to be joining leprechauns at the end of the rainbow, or whatever they're going to say. Right. And at that point, I say, what do you mean by that? And then they you know, go off on what they actually mean by that. And then I'll say, hey, could you be wrong about your beliefs or where do you get your information from? At that point, you see how open they are to even a conversation. Would you be interested in knowing if what you believe is false? And then just dialogue with that. And then you say, hey, would you be interested in knowing what I believe? And then segue on into uh, the gospel. That's, that's, that's where good. I'd go. Uh, you don't have to have it canned, but there are certain questions in the midst of that that I do bring up. What do you mean by that? How do you know that to be true? And if they say, well, I know that to be true because of X, Y, and Z, I say, oh, so you do believe in truth. Right. What is truth according to your worldview? Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Where do you get your info from, and could you be wrong? Those are the areas I, I talk about. Like what you brought up about Buddha. I wanted to produce a tract called I Can't Believe It's Not Buddha. Uh, <laughs> are you serious? I'm serious. About the exclusivity of Christ. Hmm. That would be a smooth tract. It would be. Uh, Scotty, what would you say in 30 seconds oh, or less? Yeah, real quickly, um, you may think it's hard to believe that God made everything out of nothing, but the alternative is to believe that nothing turned itself into everything. Hmm. And that was a quote from uh, a, a great evangelist. Um, his name was Mark Cahill. Hmm. Right. <laughs> All right. Why don't we come back to us? <laughs> you got 26 really seconds. I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> um, How's the wife? She's great. <laughs> and yours? Good. Do you have five kids now? Uh, five kids. Yeah. Um, three boys, two girls, and <laughs> we have 10 seconds left. <laughs> oh, spin <laughs> Thanks for being with us. God bless you guys. <laughs> for questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll free. 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.